Okay, Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas uh, in advance because uh, I know that we still have six more days, right? But as I mentioned in the Philippines, uh, the moment the calendar turns to September, the burr, that's the time that uh, you're hearing Christmas songs in the shopping malls and different places around the Philippines. And, and for us, we've cel- we are celebrating it for so long, for long uh, month, especially from now on until uh, before the Valentine's Day. Imagine how long we are celebrating the Christmas. And uh, even Pinky and I were just uh, uh, talking yesterday, and she said, it seems that it's not Christmas, because we are used to different atmosphere when we are in the Christmas time, right? And I don't know where you uh, grew up, but where we grew up is a place where you will feel that the uh, Christmas season is, the spirit of Christmas is all around us. But here, uh, it's totally different. Yesterday, uh, I was just in the house uh, preparing for the message, and it's so hot. When we were in America, it's so cold during that, uh, this season, and there it's so hot. And I said, is this Christmas or what? Or uh, when we are looking at it, I've been asking uh, the Lord that how will I be able to spread the spirit of Christmas? Because I cannot do anything about it in terms of the weather. I, I was hoping, that's why I said in the message yesterday in our group chat that uh, let's do our fellowship time here in our uh, in the building because we are not sure about the weather next uh, today uh, here in Melbourne. So we've decided to do this because uh, to have the lunch here, the fellowship time, because I don't want us to just uh, look for places where we can have our lunch. So this is the best place and easy for us to have this moment of fellowship and food and fun together. But this morning, I just want us to have this time that we can reflect on Christmas. What's the message of Christmas? Because many of us are just looking at the reason why we celebrate Christmas. And for others, they cannot help it but to wait for Christmas because that's the time that they can have a long weekend holiday. But for us, I think it's a good way for us just to reflect not only... uh, this season of Christmas, but also for us to reflect each day of what God has done for us. And because this, I read the passage in Luke chapter 2, verses uh, 1 to 20, because this is a story of the birth of Jesus in Bethlehem. In our songs together, we have this, that we are seeing, imagining the, the scene we're in when God sent His Son in a manger. When I mentioned that it was a divine setup because all throughout God is at work from the beginning of the creation when man fall into sin. And the world has had been waiting for a long time for this promised Messiah from Genesis chapter 3, 15, wherein when God said that I'm going to send a messenger, a deliverer who will crash the head of Satan, the serpent's head. And when we look at this, I think it's good for us to have the background of Luke chapter, chapter 2 or the background of Christmas because when you and I are aware, you'll be able to say, you'll be able to understand why is it that the message that is flowing in Luke chapter 2 is that it is do not be afraid, fear not. Do not be afraid, fear not. Because I think it's proper for us, I I didn't give this to Bernice, but I hope she'll find it in Malachi chapter 4. Because the last message of the prophet, a prophet, uh, Malachi in verse 4, chapter 4, the last message there is that in verse 5 to 6, Behold, I will send you Elijah the prophet before the great and terrible or awesome day of the Lord comes. And he will turn the hearts of fathers to their children 
in the hearts of the children of their fathers, to their fathers, lest I come and strike the land with a decree of utter destruction or curse. That's the last message that the people of the Lord or the Jewish nation heard from the prophet Malachi. The last word, curse or destruction. Maybe for us, we cannot understand, we cannot relate to it because when you flip it and just flipping it in one page, it's Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, the gospel, the beginning of the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. But in this passage, there's a big gap. 300 years of silence, that's what, what they said. 300 years, there's no revelation, no word from God through the prophets. They've been guessing and waiting for the Lord to speak to them again. They're used in hearing the message from the Lord. And yet after this message in Malachi chapter 4, verse 5 to 6, it seems that there's a prophecy that God will send Elijah or a prophet like Elijah. And maybe for many of us, we'll be able to say that it is now John the Baptist. It's John the, ba- the Baptist who said, Behold, the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. It is a promise for you and I, especially for the people more than 2,000 years ago, when they are not hearing the message of God. And then all of a sudden, God is speaking through his prophet. But this time, it's not through the prophet, but through his messenger, the angel of the Lord, angel Gabriel. And I hope since this is uh, in Christmas season, I hope you will take time just to visit the Christmas story in Matthew, Mark. Mark, there's no Christmas story there. It was the Lord Jesus who who is already in the wilderness or after the baptism, uh, during the baptism of the Lord Jesus. But when you look at the accounts in Matthew and then look, then John, John he presented Christ. He was not born in Bethlehem, but he was in existence long before the beginning of time. But the amazing part here is that when we look at this passage in Luke chapter 2, we can see here that finally the time has arrived. Finally, what they they have been waiting for is that God will fulfill the promise his promise to his people. And after 300 years of silence, God broke his silence. But the first message is, do not be afraid. Fear not. And I think this is the message that, we, uh, that I want to deliver to you. There are many messages. The love of God is already being sprinkled in this Christmas season. But here, as I read the passage in Luke, even beginning in chapter 1 to chapter 2, the message is fear not. Do not be afraid. When Zacharias received the revelation of God through angel Gabriel, the angel said to Zacharias, do not be afraid. Fear not. And maybe you're thinking, why is it that every time there's a, a revelation or the angel will appear, you, he will say, fear not. Or maybe because you will see unusual creature and you will be afraid. <laughs> oh, fear not. Okay, I think I'm going to die seeing an apparition or a revelation of something that is so strange. That's why the angel will say, fear not. Or maybe because it is so common for us to react in fear. Every time we encounter something, even the bad news or even a seemingly news that will hurt us. We are always afraid. Over and over again in the scripture, especially in the Old Testament, God is always saying, fear not. Do not be afraid because we are afraid. But finally, when the time has arrived, the angel brought God's message to Mary and Joseph. And that is, you will become the parents of the Savior. You will name him Jesus. 
for he will save his people from their sin. And what are the events that took place here? Not only that this is a message coming from the Lord through the angel, but also, as I said, God is at work behind the history. Because Caesar Augustus called for the census. It is through Quirinius that here we can say that it is so difficult to understand for them that there will be a census that will be going on and those who were born in their own original places, they need to register themselves there. And it is like for me, maybe if the president of the Philippines will say, hey, all who are born in the Philippines must register again. And for me, I will not be uh, uh, maybe moved to go th there or to do that. But if there's a de decree coming from the king, because for us, for the president, you can ignore that. And sometimes when you ignore a decree or a law, you will pay the fine, right? But we even... Uh, if, you cannot, if you will not vote during the votation or election in the Philippines, you will not get fined. But here I've experienced that when I missed the election, uh, missed voting, uh, two years ago I think, I was served a letter. Uh, we have seen in, your, in, our, um, in our system that you failed to do your obligation as a citizen to elect or to vote. Therefore, you need to pay $180, I think, fine. Because I missed voting, uh, to vote. So I said, where was I? I tracked my steps, only to realize that during the election, we were moving from Port Melbourne to stay here for a month or two in this building, on the second uh, mezzanine. And I, I said to Pinky, I think I have a good excuse. I didn't, receive, I didn't receive the notice that it's election time, but at the same time, it was not going. That time, you, need, you don't need to go to the voting poll because you need to do this. You can do this online. But I failed to do that. And thank God, after uh, much praying and also sending a letter that I have a good excuse, uh, I got a clemency. I received a pardon. Okay, uh, your excuse is valid, so you don't need to pay the fine. But in this situation, I believe that they don't have any choice but to go to their own birthplace. And you can see it even in this, in verse 4. And Joseph also, together with other people, went up from Galilee, from the town of Nazareth, to Judea, to the city of David, which is called Bethlehem. It only shows that the line of Jesus came from the line of David. It is also still the fulfillment of the prophecy that David will have a son who will sit on the th throne of God and whose reign will be forever and ever. It's, it was not fulfilled by Solomon, and we know that the Solomon turned his back from the Lord. And the fulfillment is this, because he was of the house and lineage of David. And even Mary herself is from the line of David. How it is amazing that in verse 5, to be registered with Mary, his betrothed, who was with the child. And when we look at this, it seems that Mary, with big Tommy, will be traveling from Nazareth or from this town wherein they are to Judea, that they will travel this far with pregnant wife. I remember the time when Pinky was seven months pregnant with uh, Summer. And we are praying that the doctor will give her a pass to fly, to go to Australia from Manila. And it's so good that her tummy is not obvious that it's so big because she's uh, tiny. So she's tiny that it looks like it's five months or less than six months. So that's why that we, 
receive a pass from the doctor and then she was allowed to fly because I think during the time, maybe right now, the same thing, that you are not allowed to fly when you are, if you are seven months pregnant or eight months t- towards there because they are, they are avoiding a delivery in the middle of the, uh, the trip. But with this, imagine that this is no um, Hollywood type of movie that you can find it's easy. She will go, uh, she will ride in the limousine and go to the hotel. And then the hotel, uh, when they are in the hotel, they will put, put their bags. And then if it's time, she will tell Joseph, I need to go to the emergency room. I need to go to the emergency and the hospital. And then, okay, I'll just call Uber. I'll just call the limousine and then go there and give birth. But no, the, the problem here is because of the census, it is so packed. This city is so busy to the point that there was no room for them in the inn. Imagine. Mary and Joseph was promised that they will have a baby who will be called Jesus, the Savior, the King of kings and the Lord of lords. And yet, there was no room for him. To the point beyond our imagination that he was born in a manger. And for us, it seems that I was, uh, maybe I don't know if someone uh, here was born in the manger. I know someone, my niece, was born in the taxi. Because in the Philippines, it's like a kilometer away. They are in the middle of the traffic and my mom was the one who caught the baby in the taxi, in the cab. But here, I think it's still okay because the taxi was air-conditioned. And with this, imagine the three senses, the smell, the sound, and even this noise, uh, the, even this um, sights that you can see. The smell, sights, and smell, uh, the sound of animals going around there because it's a manger. And yet, God chose this way for his son to be delivered in a lowly manger. The amazing part here is not that, of course, uh, we've experienced four deliveries of our kids, not me, but Pinky, but uh, every time we heard or every time we gave the news that uh, we are having a baby and the baby was born, the guests or our fr- friends, close friends, will visit us. But the amazing part here is that the only, the first visitor of the Lord Jesus were shepherds. One of the lowliest um, job ever during this time. Shepherds. The shepherds, they are nobody in the pasture. Nobody. And yet, God chose this visitor, this people, group of people, to visit the Lord Jesus first. And when we describe this, the shepherds are an outcast in the society because of, because of their smell, because of their work, because the way they conduct their, their business, but also because for them, these shepherds are not a people person because they are sheep person. It is for them uh, when they are looking at it that they have earned this reputation that during the time, in the ancient time, that as a shepherd, you are not allowed to give witness. You are not allowed to stand in the witness stand to, uh, because of the murder that you have seen. Because of your reputation, you are not credible as a shepherd. But for this, God chose them to be the first visitor and also witness of this message, of this great news, the news of God becoming flesh. And with this, the focus of our study this morning will be in verse 10. 
It says, and the angel said to them, to the, angel, to the shepherd, fear not. Fear not. Behold. When you hear, when you see the word behold, it is like, I want your attention. Listen to me. Because I'm going to say this. In other translation, it says, behold, fear not. Or fear not. Why? Because I bring good news with great joy. That will be for all the people. The great news, the good news is not only for you who will be receiving the news, but I want you to send this news, this great news. And I want you to rejoice. Look at this. It says, great joy. Good news of great joy. And when you, since I've mentioned about the background of this, that God was silent for 300 years, now I want you to have this great news, this good news, that will bring great rejoicing. Why? Because for unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Christ, the Lord. There are three names, three titles that the angel has mentioned here. Because with this, we can see the first one is that the Savior. During that time, the Savior can be a general, a captain, but also a king. A Savior, like a hero. I'm going to send you a hero, a Savior. And for them... For the angel, he didn't stop by saying a Savior. Because this Savior is the Christ, which is the anointed one, the Messiah. And for them to hear this, that this Savior is not just an ordinary Savior, but he is also the Christ, the anointed one. Do you remember the time when God promised to Abraham that I'm going to give a head crusher, the anointed one, the Messiah? He is the one. They've been waiting for this even during the time when, when Eve gave birth to a son. And she said, is this the one? Is, is this the one who is the promised one? And yet, he is not the one. And they've been waiting and waiting. And they thought even during the time of Moses that Moses is the one. But he was not the one. He is one of the messengers or the Messiah who will save them, but Moses is only a type of the Messiah. But Jesus Christ is the one, the anointed one. Not only that, that he is not only the Savior, not only the Messiah, but he is the Lord. The Lord, Kurios, meaning he is the one who showed up in the burning bush when he revealed himself to Moses. I am the Yahweh. So this title of Christ that was given to the people or to the, the messenger, this shepherds, was so astonishing to the point that this child that you are going to visit is not just an ordinary child. He is God in the flesh. The angel's message to the shepherd gives them the comfort, but also as, as, as like puzzling message. Really? After 300 years of silence, now God is telling us not to be afraid because he was about to fulfill his prophecy, his promise to his people. And this is the message of Christmas. Do not be afraid because of the good news that God is giving to his people, and this will bring great joy to the people. Now let's see the end of fear. Fear not. These words were always in the vocabulary of the angels. Remember when I said in Luke chapter 1 that Zechariah, when he heard the first statement of the angel, fear not, do not be afraid. Even to Mary, do not be afraid. To the shepherds, do not be afraid. But fear had been present for a long, long time. 
even beginning the fall. Adam and Eve were scared because of their sin. Abraham lied about Sarah because of his fear. Jacob was afraid of Esau. Moses was scared of what God was calling him to do. He was so afraid that he was looking for excuse not to follow the Lord. The Israelites were scared to go into the promised land because of the giants. He was so afraid. They were so afraid. Even today, this Christmas season, we have our own fears, right? Fears that our family or even our health, finance, even the future, what will happen, the uncertainty, especially if you are living in Victoria right now. Fear is everywhere. And yet, I think as follower of the Lord Jesus Christ, this message of do not be afraid, fear not, is, only, is not only the message for the shepherds, but also for us who are followers of the Lord Jesus Christ. We have all the reason to be afraid, right? When we look at the news, when we read the articles of, about the, the COVID, about the new variants, about many things, we have all the reason. But as followers of the Lord Jesus Christ, what I would like to deliver this morning is for us not to be afraid because God has given us the reason, the main reason not to be afraid because He is with us. We have, sing, we have sung the song of Emmanuel, Noel, Noel. It means Emmanuel, God with us. Matthew, when he opened his book, his, uh, the gospel account, of the Lord Jesus Christ, he said, Emmanuel, you shall name him Emmanuel. You shall name him Emmanuel because God is with us. Emmanuel was not disclosed or defined when the angel said about Emmanuel in, in Isaiah. They were just thinking, God with us. But in Matthew, when he mentioned about this word Emmanuel, it was defined that God is with us. And even at the very end of Matthew, in Matthew 28, Jesus himself said, I am with you. As he gave his disciples this great truth about our mission, the mission to go and make disciples in all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to obey, to observe all things that he has commanded us. And I am with you always, even unto the end of the age. I think for us, this is a good way and enough reason for us not to be afraid. I was, I need to be honest as well that when I'm looking at the situation, the news, and even other evidence for me to be afraid, I'm afraid. As simple as driving along Melbourne, seeing my gas or my petrol is empty, and looking at the prices of the petrol, like $2, almost $2 per liter. It used to be $1 when I arrived here. And now the prices are high, and there's uh, many Many reasons for me to be afraid. I have four kids, Lord. How can I raise them well? But when I look back, this is a good reminder for me. The Lord is with me. The Lord is with us. That's why there's no reason for us to be afraid. Because the Savior is not, He didn't stay in the manger. He grew in, in stature and in, in, even in the, fear, in, the, in the fear of God and man. He grew in the favor of man and God, and then Jesus fulfilled his destiny, his mission, to save the world of sin. The birth of joy. The message for us is not to be afraid, but also to rejoice. Sometimes, this is what is lacking right now for us. And I, I'm observing it not only in my own life, but in the life of other people, especially those who are followers of the Lord Jesus Christ. We are lacking the joy 
the joy of the Lord. That's why when we look at this, why is it that we are seeking joy or happiness in other things than God? Wherein God has given us the spirit that gives us the fruit of the love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, self-control. It is this, the fruit of the Spirit for us to have this joy. And yet, why is it that we cannot enjoy life? Why, cannot, uh, why we cannot have this blessed joy? Because we are so afraid. I think this is a good way for us. It is like our feet. When we step forward, do not be afraid. And as we step forward, now we need to use our right feet in order for us to advance. Do not be afraid. Rejoice. Do not be afraid. Rejoice. Because it will paralyze us. You know the saying that analysis, the paralysis of analysis. When we analyze things, we have all the reasons to be afraid, to be paralyzed. And yet, when we believe in the message, in the word of the Lord, we don't have reason to fear now. Because he's the one saying, not just to be afraid, he's giving us the reason not to be afraid because he is with us. Now we can rejoice in the Lord. That is the message of Christmas. And I hope that this, not only this season of Christmas, but also for the rest of our lives, we will continue not to be afraid and then we will rejoice in the Lord. And we can sing the Christmas carol, Joy to the world, the Lord has come. We have all the reason to rejoice. We are people who are on our way to, the, to heaven, not just to Bethlehem, but to heaven where the Lord is. We need to express that joy to the people around us because we have missions. Mission to tell to the world that the message of Christmas is God become flesh and he dwelt among us. And look at this passage where how this, um, this, uh, this shepherd become an evangelist. Because when they said in verse uh, 11, after saying that this day is born in the city of David, the Savior, the Savior, the anointed one, the Christ, who is the Lord, this is what he said. In verse 15, when the angels went away from them, the shepherds said to one another, let us go over to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened which the Lord has made known to us. What was made known to, to them in verse 14, glory to God in the highest and on earth, peace among those with whom he is pleased. This is the message. And now when they went in verse 16, and they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the baby lying in a manger. And when they saw it, they told, uh, they made known the saying that have been told them concerning this child. This child, the Savior, the Messiah, the Lord. And what was the message? When they mentioned this message that they received from the angel, when they heard this in verse 19, Mary treasured, but Mary treasured up all these things, things that she received from the testimony of the shepherd. They're the first evangelist, not only to Mary and Joseph bringing this good news, but also here in verse 20 where we are closing our study. In verse 20 it says, and the shepherds returned, returned where? To where they came from. What happened there? Glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen as it had been told them. They started being afraid. And now they followed not to be afraid and they rejoiced. This is the end. And I hope this will be also our, not just a reaction, but our response to this message. It says, 
and the shepherds return, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen. And I think I just want to apply this into our lives right now. Why is it that we are afraid? Why is it that we don't have this joy? Because, or maybe because we are not spending time with the Lord. We are not spending time with His Word. Therefore, we are spending more time with other things that gives us the reason to be afraid. Instead of going to the source, to the Word of life, that gives us the courage not to be afraid and also that gives us the reason to rejoice in life. Because when the shepherds returned, they started glorifying and praising God. It means as well that they started working for God. And I think if we will capture this message, the only message that I want to deliver to you is not to be afraid and also to rejoice in the Lord. Why? Because in Isaiah 41.10, this is a takeaway for all of us. The Lord is saying to us when he said this to Isaiah, Fear not, for I am with you. You're afraid right now of what's going to happen in 2022? Because you are looking at your situation. Maybe I'm in trouble because of this and that. Or, no, I'm not in trouble. Because of this passage, I am with you. I have all the reason not to be afraid because God is with me. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. Oh, how I long for strength, right? We are all tired. Sick and tired of things in this life. I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. And if we have this message every single day of our lives, I think we will continue to walk forward, not backwards, but walk forward. Fear not. I am with you. Now you can rejoice. Because this Jesus that they saw in the manger didn't stay in the manger. In Revelation chapter 22, verse 12, it says, The baby Jesus, now who is the King of kings and Lord of lords, he said this to his people and also to us. Behold, I'm coming soon, bringing my recon recompense or reward with me to repay each one for what he has done. He is the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. I've been praying that the Lord will continue to speak to us, even to me. Lord, help me to believe in this. Do you believe in the message of the Word of God? Maybe we will, we will say, or we are saying, Lord, I believe. But our action, even our anxious heart, shows that we don't believe. Because it is impossible for us to Please God without faith. For the shepherds, they believe. Although at the beginning they were afraid. But they ended up working for the Lord. Working with the Lord. Glorifying Him, rejoicing, praising the Lord for what they have heard. And I hope this will be our experience, our response. Now, even for me, as I look at this, Lord, will be uh, entering to the new year, and yet I'm not sure of what's going to happen to me. Maybe you're right, you're not sure of what's going to happen to you, but I hope you will say, but I am sure that you are with me. So no matter what happens, I know that I am safe and secured because you are with me. You are the Emmanuel who is with us. And even as we prepare our hearts and our minds even to remember what the Lord has done, that's why I said that it's my uh, intention and desire right now that we will take communion, the Lord's Supper, every other Sunday 
or more than once a month for us to be reminded of why we're doing what we're doing. Why do we have to believe that God will never leave us nor forsake us? Because one, once in the history of humankind, God gave His Son, Jesus, and Jesus gave His life so that you and I will have life eternally. I would like to uh, ask uh, the ushers, please, to please uh, pass the, the bread and the cup. Even though this is like a remembering the birth of Christ, the gospel will never be complete without the death and the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. And as we do this, I hope and pray that we will not just take this uh, like this is another day for us. Thank you. Thanks. But this is a way for us to be reminded of what the Lord has done and what He is going to accomplish in us and through us. Thank you. Because if we will encapsulate the gospel, it is the birth of the Lord Jesus Christ, the life, the perfect life of the Lord Jesus Christ, the cruel death of the Lord Jesus Christ, and His resurrection, the power of His resurrection. And then... What we need to remember is that when Jesus rose from the dead before his ascension, he promised that he is and he will be with us, that he is coming back again. It was fulfilled now in the Old Testament, the prophecy that the Lord will, that God will be in the flesh who will dwell among us. His birth was fulfilled his life was fulfilled. His teaching was fulfilled. His death on the cross was fulfilled. His resurrection was fulfilled. His ascension was fulfilled. The only thing that is not yet fulfilled is his coming back. In Revelation, when we read it in 22 verse 12, he is coming back again. So that's why as we wait for the Lord's return, we are commanded also to partake this communion in order for us not just to remember what He has done, but also to anticipate His coming. But even though it seems that He is taking His time, He is giving us this confidence that I am still with you. And may this give us the confidence, the courage the faith to live our life for His glory, praising, serving, rejoicing in the Lord. So let's partake this bread and the cup as a reminder that the Lord gave His life for you and me, for us to have a blessed life. That this blood was spilled to wash away our sin. I want us to bow our heads and maybe just giving you a few seconds, a few minutes just to let the word of the Lord sink in into our hearts and allow His Spirit to speak to us. O oh Lord, our God, our Father, thank you for your word, for your promise. And actually, your promise is not only a promise anymore, but it is a reality that you are with us. But obeying you, believing in you is still 
not yet a reality in our lives. Many times we are still anxious, worrying, fearful about life, about the uncertainty of tomorrow. And yet, Father, we know, we believe, even though there are times that we are being shaken, will you please help our unbelief? Believing that you are coming back again, Lord, but also believing that you are with us now. Your Holy Spirit is living in us because of you, Lord Jesus. And I pray, Father, that you will build up our faith in you, that you will strengthen our love for you, that we will love you with all our hearts, our mind, our strength, our soul, that everything that we've got will be offered to you. Oh, Lord Jesus, please help us. And forgive us, Lord, in times of doubt and fears and worries and anxieties. Because we know that anything that's not of faith is a sin. So help us, Father, to live for you. Strengthen our faith so that we, just like the shepherds who receive your message, will be a shining light and a powerful witness to the world around us, a dark world around us, Lord. They too are in need of you, Jesus. Because no one seek after you. And we are all like sheep who are gone astray. We need the great shepherd to seek us. And thank you, Lord, for you have sought us. You have saved us. And allowed us to be part of your family. Therefore, we should be rejoicing. We should not be afraid. Because you are with us. Help us, Lord, please. Allow us to live this life, the blessed life that you, Jesus, have given us. Because we know, Lord, that the devil's intention is to destroy, to, to kill, and to rob the joy that we have. So please, Father, help us. Bless your people so that we will be a blessing to the world who is in need of a Savior. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for saving our souls. And thank you, Lord Jesus, because in you we have life. Blessed, abundant life in you, Jesus. And as you continue to pour out your favor, your blessing upon our lives, may you use us to be channels of your blessing and bring good tidings of great joy beginning from our loved ones to the people around us. Thank you so much, Lord Jesus. And for your name's sake, we pray all these things. Amen. I would like to uh, request again, D.B., to...